Do you nerd? Hey nerdlings! What up nerdlings? So we wanted to share with you the panel, the Q&A session of Sean Gunn at Branson Con 2019. Mr. Craglin himself. From Guardians of the Galaxy. And something I actually didn't know, and I'll probably get yelled at for this, but I didn't know that he played Rocket on screen for the other actors to have somebody to interact with. Yeah, that was very neat. So that was neat. I was like, I just thought it was, you know, just some regular, like, acrobatic-y type actor in the green suit. I didn't know that was Sean, so hey, good you job. Know, you know what? We <laughs> learned all kinds of things about Sean. We did. Let's not spoil it here, but did you know that Sean collects something? You should you should listen and find out what he collects. Because it's quite surprising. Now, uh, one thing that I do want to note is there were some technical issues at Branson Con with the microphones, so sometimes yeah. his audio cuts out, but he was being very professional and trying to continue what he was yeah, saying. He didn't really act like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I can't work like this. He's a really nice guy, so he just kind of soldiered through it. So hopefully uh, we'll get some subtitles in there so you can at least read what he's saying when those moments do happen. All right, nerdlings, so ravage on and enjoy the panel. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. It's good to be here in the uh, home state of Missouri. Oh, mood lighting. Wow, we're going to have like, is it red? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 70s. Uh, yeah, this is great. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be here. Seriously? Is this really, this isn't real lighting, is it? Um, this is the way we're going to find out. Oh, now we're it's blue. Getting it's getting red. My name is Josh Heston, I'm standing for Josh Gershon, so I, as long as our names are Josh, we are officially interchangeable. I'm, I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that. So, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start talking? Where do I want to start talking? I can just open it up to questions. I mean, if, there's, if you have questions for me, I'm happy to... To answer whatever you got. I'm, uh... let's, let's banter a bit and okay. open it up to questions for the rest of you guys. Um, let's begin with Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Uh, how, uh, for, I think we, how many people have seen the film? <laughs> and tell, tell us a little bit about both the, the character that you play and then also the, uh, the the animation portion that the playing rocket as well. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so I um, I have two jobs on Guardians, and in the Marvel universe, I play the role of Cracklin, who is Yondu's first mate. I uh, I and I did that in both Guardians movies, and um, I also play Rocket. interact with the other actors when we shoot the scenes originally and then the visual effects team uses my movements um, and my face and my hands mostly as they uh, start to animate the character of Rocket. Um, so I provide them. Uh, and so I'm mostly there just so that the actors aren't speaking to a, a blank, you know, space or a tennis ball or something like that. And so the visual effects team can have a, a jumping off point. So, how does what is it like to see the the rocket animation, knowing that that's you, <laughs> only in animation? Well, it's it's interesting. It's, it, I, nice. I, I, I have uh, um, an, an interesting relationship with that character because I am sort of. It takes a team of people to create rocket. Been a little bit of a different experience for me. Um, I do see things when I see uh, the, the completed movie. I see things that I did um, sometimes in the in the character and how they move and stuff. But mostly, what I'm what I'm focused on is the acting. So mostly, what I'm really trying to do is be there for the other actors, so that the, so that the 
scene makes sense. You know, it's it's hard to do. Um, it's, it's hard to make all of the pieces of a scene fit. One of the characters is completely computer generated. So I'm mostly there to facilitate that. So just the the environment of Guardians of the Galaxy, shooting that environment, being on location. What's that like? Um, well, I. Uh, I, I like it very much. Every movie is a little bit different, um, and you have to learn sort of about how the how the director runs the set and how um, you know everything sort of works. Everything is different. Every every director is different. Every uh, movie experience is different. But um, obviously, I've worked with my brother on the Guardians movies, and so I have worked with him a great deal. And, um, and I was. I, I, I'm lazy. I don't like to talk and hold the line at the same time. How about that? Is that all right? Um, but uh, yeah, so I uh, I don't know. I really enjoy doing the Guardians movies. I like working with that group of people very very much. Um, going and doing Avengers was a different type of experience, and I like that very much too. They're very different. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. Well, we appreciate what you've done. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your your character in Guardians, just because that is a fun character. Okay. And what about him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, us, give us the vibe. <laughs> uh, well, I play Kraglin, who uh, who we sort of have some hints is a Zandarian, um, and uh, you know he's one of he's a loyal soldier to Yondu. And in the first movie, and then in the second movie, I think that his loyalty wavers a little bit because he thinks that Yandu is being overly, uh, he's sort of uh, overly accommodating for Peter Quill, and I think that there's a little bit of a, if you're familiar with the, the biblical story of the prodigal son, I think, I think Bradley suffers from that a little bit, where he doesn't understand why, you know, Peter, who left, is, is embracing her. He is, you know, they want to get it sort of hurts him, but, uh, you know, over the course of the movie, Kraglin undergoes a change and starts to sort of understand uh, what Young Do means to him. And I think he's a loyal soldier. There's, there's a lot of cool metaphors in, in both Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Uh, and I really, the, a lot of father son metaphors happen in Guardians 2. Just give it, I, I'm just curious about your thoughts in terms of the development of that story and just what, what, what did that mean to you? Um, well, I think that, you know, um, Guardians 1 is about creating a family and Guardians 2 is mostly about keeping a family. And um, there's, uh, definitely Peter, I think, is figuring out what Guardians Through the, uh, you know, a lot through his mother in the first movie and his father in the second movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's really up to people to, to get what they want out of that, and whatever they, you know, if you, uh, I, I think the idea that you can build a family out of any group of people that you love and who love you back um, is a powerful message and a true one. I, I, I definitely agree with and this is, this is jumping over just a little bit, but I follow Lindsay Ellis, who's a YouTube personality that picks films apart. Okay. And uh, has, a, has a large following. And she's really good at picking films apart. Okay. And she came to Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and she's going, I, I went into this with, honestly, very little anticipation one way or the other. And she said, I had previously just lost my father shortly before. Mm -hmm. And she said, basically, it was so incredibly cathartic, I bawled my eyes out, and I absolutely loved the film. And she's going, I'm supposed to be a critic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's nice. I think, um, 
the film is, has resonated with a lot of people, and that's why we make movies, you know, I mean, I think that, um, I think that storytelling is a worthwhile thing to do. It's why people come together at conventions like this, is, is that, you know, the things that we enjoy and appreciate, um, I think are important, and it's good that they bring us together, or that they make us feel something, or that they help us through difficult times, or whatever it is, I think. I think it has value. And something that I've been thinking about, especially with the, the Marvel series Rise as a whole, we seem to be in the golden age of, of this, not just a superhero genre, but this very profound storytelling through bringing comics up to this level. Um, yeah, was that a question? <laughs> it was a starting point. I was just curious what you thought about that. I think we should open it up okay. to, to questions from the oh, audience yeah. and, and see yeah. what do we got. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Uh, what kind of, what's the worst technical problem you've had in a movie? You know, worse than a sound system not working. The, <laughs> the worst technical problem. Uh, oh gosh. You know, the, the, the first movie that I ever did was this movie called Tromeo and Juliet um, with Troma Films, which they make these like schlock B movies in, uh, in New York City in 1994. And um, there were several times uh, that somebody almost got killed on set. So I don't think anything was ever, I don't think anything was ever quite as dangerous as that. Everyone's very safe in the Marvel movies, by the way. Very, very safe. Yeah, go ahead. Was it fun playing Kirk, getting to be awkward on film, and not having to worry about not appearing awkward because you had to play such a fun, quirky character? Kirk um, was a fun, quirky, quirky character. The question, what exactly was the question in front of it? Was, was it fun not having to worry about not being awkward on film? Oh, so was it fun not having to worry about not having to worry about being awkward? Yeah, I mean, I think um, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, I, I spent a long time liking to believe that I was very different from Kirk, but, you know, at the end of the day, every character you play sort of lives inside of you somewhere. So, I'm comforted knowing that Kirk lives inside of me somewhere, which I guess is, uh, I'll just take to my grave. <laughs> He asked what, it, what it's like returning to Stars Hollow after, uh, yeah, it was nine years later and it was really interesting. It was a thing where when I was younger, you, you know, you, you never quite appreciate what you have. And that was such a great show that was so joyful to work on. Um, and I, I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have the first, first time around. And so then when it came back and it was like more popular than ever, the show had become a big hit on Netflix. So to be able to step back into it and really just enjoy the writing and enjoy the character and enjoy the talent of my coworkers and, and writers was uh, one of the coolest things I've gotten to do in my career. Uh, what was one of the most memorable you had the most memorable behind the scenes moments. Um, you'll have to wait till after Endgame comes out to talk, for me to talk about oh. for me to talk about some of those. But um, but I I think um, you know there's there's a moment where Rooker like to Michael Rooker like to pull his pants down um, at very inopportune moments. Um, nothing. Nothing inappropriate, just uh, just dumb and, and raucous. Um, that was fun. Uh, I got to know that cast quite well. We had uh, we had a lot of fun, and some of those secrets I think have to have to stay with me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the soundtrack, um, I love the soundtrack for Guardians. Um, it's very, uh, it reminds me of, of what my house felt like growing up, um, 
with my older brothers listening to music all the time. But, um, and, and we do something unusual in Guardians in that um, my brother James, who picks all those songs, he gets the rights to them before we ever even start shooting, before the script is even done, so that the songs can be written into the script um, so that we know for sure what we're, what we're doing, and then we'll actually hear them play on set often um, during, during scenes, particularly during scenes where the songs are supposed to be playing. Um, so uh, that's a lot of fun, but he also takes pride in being able to tell everyone that he chose all the songs himself. Um, so no, I don't get to take any of them. Yeah. Um, working with my brother on set is really great. Uh, I'm fortunate in that he's very good at his job, so, uh, and he's my older brother, so I'm comfortable with him sort of being my boss. Um, you know, honestly, I get questions a lot from people who are uh, very competitive with their siblings, and we're just not that competitive in my family. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. We have a shorthand for communicating with one another that makes him probably the easiest person for me to work with. So, um, yeah, it'd probably be more fun for, for me to say that he bullied me all the time, but uh, he's actually a pretty good boss. Do I know how many jobs Kirk had on Gilmore Girls? Somebody has counted online, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. And it depends on how you count, too. You, if you count only the ones you saw, or if you also count the ones that he spoke about, um, you get two different numbers, but I don't know, it's like 60 or something. Yes, I improvised the line on the first Guardians movie when Rocket says, um, uh, Rocket says, uh, fine, it, it, you know, now I'm standing. Are you happy? So the, in the script, th that line ends there. He says, um, you know, whatever it is, okay, fine, now, now I'm standing. And then I ad lib the line, bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. Um, which my brother really enjoyed and ended up staying in the movie. Um, so that one was in there. I think there's also maybe a couple of other little things here and there. For the most part, those Guardians stays pretty close to script. Um, most of most everything we say is, is in the script. And then my brother will also have a. Um, a set of like alternate lines that he writes himself for tags and jokes and things like that within the scene. So a lot of times when things are improvised, they're improvised by him, sort of giving them to us, you know, um, from the director's monitor. So he, he write, you know, but very few, you know, I'm sure Chris Pratt has a, a couple of lines here and there that he improvised and I have a couple of them. Everyone has a couple, but. Not that many. <laughs> oh, oh, with the cast. What's it like working with them? Oh, they're great. I mean, it, it was, um, you know, it, it sounds like such a cliche when you hear movies talk about that it's the, that they're a family, but. We, you know, it, over the course of a couple of movies, I got to really, um, really respect and come to love my coworkers on those Guardian of the Guardians movies, particularly Chris and Zoe and Dave and Tom and Karen and not Rucker, but um, <laughs> uh, Rucker and, and, and everybody, you know, and, and Lee Pace on the first movie and, and, um, and Kurt. Uh, it really is a great group of people, um, and I think that they did a really good job of casting people that are good humans in addition to being good actors. 
Um, and so it's a really nice set to work on. And then I went and did Avengers and I, and I got to work with a bunch of new people. You know, I worked with Chris Hemsworth a lot on Infinity War and that you'll see when you see Endgame, Rocket gets to interact with some new people. So it's, it's been a very cool thing in my career to just in a, the space of a few short years, being able to work with this whole list of really talented and, and uh, amazing actors. I'm very, very grateful for it. My favorite Chris? <laughs> um, I'd have to go with, uh, with my friend Chris Pratt. I, I, I like them all though, they're all good. They're all good guys. <laughs> Things that are difficult to film. I mean, when when Rocket and Kraglin would have scenes together, that was really tricky. I would have to get in and out of wardrobe a lot and really kind of be able to to construct the scene from either character's point of view and try to still make it work. Um, I think we did make it work. It takes a little more focus and a little more preparation, but uh, that was that was really tricky. Um, Anything involving stunts can be can be tricky, you know. Um, fortunately, I'm I'm, uh, I'm not asked to do a whole lot of stunts. Um, I'm not known for my action, uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like the more girls I had to do, I had to like learn to walk on stilts, and swing dance, and those were always um, a little bit of more of a my job. Speaking of um, Gilmore Girls and was the Dancing Marathon episode hard? The Dancing Marathon episode, yes, of Gilmore Girls was really hard. It was like a week of, I had to, to you know, take lessons for a little while. And then they only ended up using like, you know, five seconds of me dancing for, you know, like a two-minute routine that we had to choreograph. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was one of the trickier episodes, but a lot of fun. I liked it when we would do those big elaborate, like set these episodes where you have, you know, the dance marathon or the, the festival of living art or the, um, you know, the Fiddler on the Roof production, where then we would actually put on all those productions. It was really cool. Um, any pranking on the set? Um, I don't know. It's mostly people just making jokes about each other. I don't think there's any, you know, other than, as I mentioned, other than uh, Rooker showing his butt. There's not a lot of, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of, like, uh, pranking. Fortunately, we're pretty nice to each other. On the questions, we're right here. Easy. I'm just. Oh, hey. Hi. Kirk was extremely like possessive of that dance marathon trophy. Oh right. Did you get to keep that trophy, or no. did you have any connection with I the trophy? I did not get to keep the dance marathon trophy. I don't know why. I, 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 I try not to steal too much from the set. And you can't do that on the normal movies or you'll get yeah, assassinated. No, <laughs> um, but the, yeah, no, I don't, have, I don't have that dance marathon trophy. I wonder where it is. I wonder if, the, the, if, if somebody has that on the shelf or if it's just like, if it's like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's just like a crate in Warner Brothers somewhere. <laughs> What would the best and worst parts of living in Stars Hollow be? The worst part would be the snow, um, particularly if it's the fake snow made out of paper that we have on set, because I'm convinced that that was a carcinogen of some kind. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the, I think Stars Hollow, the cold weather would be the worst part. And the best part is the camaraderie. Everyone's so nice to you everywhere you go. I like that. That's a first for me. <laughs> I've <laughs> done like 50 something conventions now. I've never done a panel interrupted by a barking dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. I think though that Gilmore Girls, that, but yeah, the thing that, was, that people respond to that they like is that the, you know, the idea that your community would, would function as a, an extension of your family. Is something that I think people miss. You know, they get it online, but they don't get it when they actually walk out of their doors and onto their and, and onto their block and onto their street. It's increasingly hard for people to do that, and um, and I think we could use more of that in the world. A favorite scene that I've ever done in my whole. Career? Wow. Uh, that is a tough question. You know, there's a there's a scene early in Gilmore Girls in the second season, or maybe it's even the end of the first, but where Kirk is on a park bench um, trying to negotiate to get this basket. Or, or, or Jackson wants to buy the basket from Kirk. Kirk they don't know. And I always think of that scene because it was the first time in my career when I really felt like, oh, this character's going to be around for a while, and it's a character with a backstory, and I'm not just, you know, like hustling for one line here or there, or one short little scene, I'm actually now playing this character that's, that exists in this world. Um, and I really like that. Uh, I think that, you know, if I were to go to Guardians, the, the 12% of a plan scene sticks out because that was really great to just have a day to work on that scene and really try to make it great. And, um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot. There's a, a day um, that I can't t tell too much about because it's coming up in Endgame, but a day on set that was just like the most beautiful place I've ever been. Um, that, day, that day sticks out. Gosh. I, I, it, they would keep coming. I don't know how I would pick a favorite, but that's a few. You? Uh, yeah, what I'm working on now. I'm actually going from here to Atlanta to work on a, uh, a TV pilot for the for the Sci-Fi Channel. That I can't really say too much about other than that. It's, it's just in the pilot stage right now, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that's something I can talk more about later. Um, I'm going to do a horror movie called Close Before Midnight. Um, we're going to shoot up in the Pacific Northwest in the, um, later on in the spring. I'm excited about that. Um, Endgame is coming out, so um, at the very least I participated as Rocket for a lot of that, and then I can't comment on any other participation that I had, and then. Um, I might be going to work, do a little bit of work on a movie in the fall that I can't talk about. So um, <laughs> that's that's kind of my basic rundown for now. I'm trying to stay busy. Do you feel like you've preferred working on TV or movies? That's kind of a complicated question about TV or movies. I really like um, in in television. I like playing characters that have an open-ended history so that the character sort of continues to grow and to live as the as the show goes on. But, you know, now that I've done movies that are part of a franchise where you get to do that in movies too, that's certainly a lot of fun. I mean, there's nothing like being on the red carpet for a Marvel premiere. I mean, there's nothing in the, in the entire industry that compares to that, you know. Maybe being in Star Wars or maybe you know, the DC, whatever. But even those big tentpole movies, there's nothing like it. So it would be hard to trade that for anything. But I do like the stability of TV. And I 
like the regular work. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to be an actor since I was a kid, and I've been doing it professionally for 22 years, and my goal was always pretty much to work as much as possible, you know, to like keep, to stay employed. That's, that's what character actors do, and so anything that helps me do that, You've contributed to a lot of fandoms that obviously we all enjoy and everything, but is there any particular ones that you like? Fandoms that I like? Um, I'm, I'm very into Rick and Morty. <laughs> um, I just, I love that show. I think it's like, I think it's like the greatest show ever. Um, it, it, it's like scratching your brain. It like makes, it, um, what else? I, I, I like a lot of things. I, I do like the Marvel movies, um, and I'm, I've, now that I know everybody, I'm getting more into like really being into the movies, but I was, wasn't ever much of a comic book guy. That was my brother. Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's more. I love Game of Thrones. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And I like hip hop and sports and all that stuff that doesn't doesn't quite overlap. <laughs> Did we have a question over on the side? Yeah, I think it was over there. Oh. All right. You. Anything I don't like about being an actor? Um, you know, it's, when I was younger, the uncertainty was fun. You know, like not necessarily knowing where my next job was coming from, not having a traditional job the way that other people have more, you know, sort of steady work. Um, but, you know, I got older and, and it gets to a point where that part of it is hard. The, you know, the. Being an actor is not hard. It's very joyful and fun, and, and you know, it's when when you're working, it's great. But you're not always working, and that part of it can get can get difficult. Um, but you know, that's really the only thing for me. I never got quite. I've, I've been recognizable for a long time, but I, I have friends who are so famous that it makes their lives incredibly difficult. Um, their lives aren't otherwise difficult, but just that one part of it is difficult, of being a, uh, being a public figure and not being able to turn it off. Um, I don't really experience that too much. I'm mostly like, I'm very grateful when people know who I am. I've, I've tried to, you know, build a career by having people watch what I do and enjoy what I do. So if they do, then I'm, then I'm happy. So I like, I like it when people know who I am, but you know, it's, it can get hard for some people. Yeah. Have you been star struck by any of your co-stars? You know, I don't really get starstruck anymore. I, I'm starstruck by um, by by people that um, that other that that would be surprising. Like I I was starstruck when I met Elliot Gould. <laughs> you know, because I love his work and like. Um, but, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was like, hey, hey man, I don't know, I, I don't, uh, I, I tend not to. I'm reverent, though. I'm not starstruck, but, like, I, I'm, I'm very, um, I, I, I do, I do feel like there is a level of respect, um, to be given to, uh, to people whose work that I admire, you know, and anybody who's made it for a long time and has been in the public eye for a long time and keeps doing it is is worth worthy of some some form of respect and admiration. So that I do that, but it's, it feels more like as a as a uh, you know a colleague or as a, a younger guy, as a, you know, as a, looking up to somebody. Who's yeah, I don't really freak out too much. Do 
Um, a project that I want to do. Um, no, you know, I think I'd really like to, to I, I would love to, to go back to television and be on a show that people are really, that's, that people are really into and it's really current. I, I, would, I would like that very much right now, but there's all sorts of things I would like. You know, like, like I really like working and I chase great scripts more than anything else. So whether that great script comes in the form of a, you know, a big budget movie or a television show or a small budget movie or a show on like free form or some kind of new weird platform or something like that, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's like a really great script. Cool. Yes, sir. Oh man. Was there anything you got to keep from production? Anything I got to keep? Let's see. Not really. I keep the back of my chair sometimes because I think that's pretty cool. That has my name on it. Um, <laughs> but I don't. I don't steal. I, I steal socks all the time. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the thrilling answer you were looking for. But if I if I put on the socks and I like the socks from that day of work better than the socks that I wore in the work that day, then that's the pair that I wear home. <laughs> like, this is fascinating, so go on. Um, so what are your favorite socks? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've stolen from sets, but God, I, I'm good about that. I know people do it. People like take home little things from set, but it's so hard on the Marvel movies because anything you use, they they keep very very good track of. Like they because they may need to use it again, you know, no matter what it is. Even if it's something that gets destroyed, you know, you never know if they're just gonna they're gonna find a way to. flashback or something you know so so they keep everything um, and they keep track of it so I wouldn't really be able to do it on the movie but I'm sure there are good things yeah something that I collect um, <laughs> Yeah, believe it or not, I um, I collect rooster plates. What? <laughs> and that's not a joke. <laughs> I um. Okay, so I uh, I used to be a big fan of the Antiques Roadshow. Um, I find it very. <laughs> 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 you guys are hardcore. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so I just wanted to, like, I find it very calming to watch that show. And so I wanted to collect something. I started to get more into, like, you know, antiques and things like that. And I got this rooster plate. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever talked about this in public, so this is the first, guys. You're Missourians, so I feel like we can trust one another. Um, so I, I got this, uh, this rooster plate in a in a um, in a secondhand store, and I thought it was really cool, and I really liked it. I thought, oh, maybe, maybe this will be my thing now. I'm gonna collect rooster plates, and I got really into it. And you'll find that the the, <laughs> the rooster has been a symbol for um, you know having plenty and for harvest and things like that for centuries and centuries. So as an image to put on something, it goes. Back and I, I realized oh, this is really cool. So I have plates from you know I have mid-century modern plates and and I have plates that are from uh, the Art Deco period. But I also have some like old Chinese and, and Japanese plates from uh, you know hundreds, uh, in, in some cases many hundreds of years ago. Um, I don't know why that's the thing that I chose. It's just like. It finds you, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. um, how many do I have? I have, well, I would say that the, the number that are worthy of display um, 
is about, um, it's, it's probably about 30 or 40. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Thanks for the question. No one has ever asked me that question before. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Any character that's hard to get into character with, any character that's described as a regular guy, I have a lot of problems with. <laughs> um, I don't know what that says about me, but I'm like, how is it? Hey, how do regular people behave? I don't know what that. I don't know what that's about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's that's sort of half true, half joke. I I try to find. I mean, I really. I try to love every character I play, even if they're not good. You have to, you know, even bad guys have a point of view, you know. You, you have to sort of love the idea of being them, you know. Um, and that's kind of how I start with most characters. Yes. I am a Cardinals fan, yes sir. How to get the nickname, the judge? Is that the, is that the nickname you're talking about? Um, yeah, some people call me judge, and um, uh, my brother Matt will say it's because I'm smug and judgmental, but I don't appreciate that. Um, it was, I was judging a contest, uh, just some something foolish many years ago, and my a couple of my brothers and, and some family friends just thought it was appropriate. I think that I'm actually I like to believe that I am actually very fair minded and judicial. And I'm very clinical. Like I don't I will uh, I will try to analyze what's right or wrong about a situation, you know, separate from any personal feelings that I have. So I uh, I, I think I I wear it as a badge of honor that people call me the judge. I like it as a and yes, I'm a Cardinals fan, like big time, like from, you know, blood. Yeah. You said you were from Missouri. Where are you from Missouri? I, I grew up outside St. Louis in the west county of St. Louis. Yeah. I've never been to Branson. Um, or I guess, how close is Silver Dollar City to where? About like five miles. Okay, so I, I was there a couple times as a kid, and I would and I would be in Springfield a couple of times, um, but um, I haven't been to Branson. But my my um, my folks have a house at like the Ozarks. I've been to many many times over the years, and they still uh, they, they still live in St. Louis. So when I go to see my parents, I uh, I go back to St. Louis. Yes. I Favorite Game of Thrones character is um, is Arya. You know, she's just such a badass. I, I, I just like. I mean, I feel like that's the. She's the. She is the center of the, the show for me. That's the character that I really want to see win, succeed somehow. She's the one I root for most of But I did get to work with Peter Dinklage on uh, Infinity War, and he was delightful. <laughs> he said Croatia is the coolest place where they shoot. There you go, too bad. <laughs> you know, right now, comedic roles are drama. I, you know, I kind of made my career doing comedy because I really got to be known on Gilmore Girls. And that's pretty broad comedy. Um, and once you do that, you're just a comedy guy. And so it, it's hard to break out of that. I think I'm just starting to do it, though. I don't have a preference. I like good scripts. But now I, t I tend to want to do a little more drama just so that people know that I'm not just a comedic actor, you know? Um, and um, I'm, a, you know, I'm a strange enough guy that there'll probably be always some sort of element and stuff that I do. But I'm going to, 
you know, the, this TV show I'm going to do right now is pretty much uh, straight drama, which is good. I'm looking forward to it. When uh, uh, you talk about having a good script, mm -hmm. getting a good script, what constitutes a, a good script? What constitutes a great script? Well, I think that a good script, but believe it or not, most good scripts have a, a formula that, that pretty much works. You know, there's a there's a an adherence to storytelling um, that that any good script has to be aware of in terms of, you know, having a, a character who has something to learn and, and then, you know, there's traditional act structure and things like that. So, so any, any script that makes sense and all the pieces are together, I think can be a good script as long as it understands how to tell a story. And then what elevates it to being a great script will be all of the ways in which those things are sort of plugged in, and uh, you know the, uh, the 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 extra things that only a great writer can put into it. Um, you know, really, you kind of know it when you see it. Um, but um, my brother always says that anybody can have a great idea for a script. Very, very few people can actually write a great script, and I think that is quite true. And it's definitely true from my experience. You know, for all the things I've read in my career, um, you know, it's hard to write a good script, but you know when you see it. Favorite author? Um, you know, I read. I read. I would go way back for my my favorite author is probably Flannery O'Connor. Um, so if you're, uh, if you don't mind going back a little bit, um, great southern short story writer. These days, I read, I read way more nonfiction than fiction because um, I don't know. The world's kind of a scary place right now, so I'm trying to learn as much as I can about everything. Great script that I wanted to be a part of. Um, well, gosh, I don't know. That's not. It's not really. It's not really a great practice to talk about roles you didn't get. You know what I mean? Um, there are a few, but I would say that I've mostly been. Uh, I, I've mostly been really lucky and very grateful for the roles that I have. Any writing of my own? A little bit, I have. Yeah, I, I wrote a script that I I would like to actually make, you know, sometime in the next year or so. Um, and I've also done a little bit of like I re rewritten some things for stuff that I've produced, and um, you know. But but I also I, I'm a tourist when it comes to writing, and I I know that you know I have three brothers that are professional writers, so. I know sort of what goes into that. And it's not something I take lightly. It's not something that's easy to dabble in, you know. Um promotion is um it, it is part of the job. It's like there's two separate there's two separate sides to being an actor when you're a working actor. There's the, the part of where you actually do your job, where you get scripts and you show up on set. But then there's also the business of managing your career, um, of and of you know of selling you as a as an independent contractor to go and work in things, and you're kind of the CEO of that company. Um, so you know, um, yeah, it's part of my job to to try to promote things and to, you know um, do interviews and, and things like that. 
but um, it's it's not it's not the hardest part of the job. The hardest part is getting work. You know, promoting things that you've already made. You know, hopefully you've, you're not ashamed of anything you've done. And so it's like it's just um, sometimes it's grueling, but it's 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 never painful. Um, what inspired me to become an actor? I, I wanted to be an actor from the time I was very, very young. Um, and I always said I wanted to be a professional actor because I knew that it was hard for actors to find work. And I always kind of made that my goal. Um, I don't know exactly where it came from, except I know that when I was a kid, and a lot of times other people would get shy when they had to get in front of people and do things, and I loved it. I was like, it really, I felt like I was alive when I would be in front of people performing or talking to them. Um, over the years, I think it changed for me. I learned once I started like really studying acting and studying it as a craft, I learned that the whole idea of getting into someone else's skin and trying to look at the world through different sets of eyes um, was a comfortable place for me. It helped me be more compassionate and more a sort of understanding of how everybody uh, lives, and I really like that part of it. So, um, I mean, now that's what, why I still love it, is that I'll never, you know, if I'm doing my job correctly, I'll keep getting better and better and better. My, you know, like I, I, I like that my work is better right now than it was five years ago or 10 years ago. And part of that is just learning and trying to understand people better, which is cool, and, and I, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to do it. All right, guys. I think we can shut it down, yeah. Does anybody have any last questions? Any mm -hmm. last thoughts? Yes, sir. A Belco Experiment is a, is a horror movie they did. Um, it was like, it's really horrifying. It's a bunch of people trapped in, a, in an office building and forced to kill one another. Um, and the experience of shooting it was like the exact opposite of what it must have been like to actually be in that situation because it is the most fun I've ever had. I think working on a project in my whole life. It was a bunch of great actors, um, people that you would describe as actors, actors, you know, who really loved the work and, and loved the job. And we were um, in Bogota, Colombia for six weeks and uh, having a blast killing one another during the day and, you know, salsa dancing at, uh, at night. So um, that was a lot of fun. If you like really gory movies, check it out. Yeah. Uh, is there anything I can tell you about in game? Um, no. <laughs> it's occurring. It's going to make a whole lot of money. <laughs> I can tell you that. Spoiler alert, it's going to make a bunch of money. Yeah. Sean, it is such an honor to have you here, Branson. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Go back to my table and come back and say hi to you. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, he had so many great stories. Yeah, we learned a lot. A and, lot uh, you know, how about those rooster plates? Yeah. Oh, did, did you cheat and just jump to the end? Come <laughs> on, guys. Um, anyway, it was really great how willing he was to answer so many questions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. I, I, I think one of my favorite parts was people kept trying to get him to say something about Endgame and all he would say is, I can't say anything about Endgame. <laughs> I could tell you that story, but it's in Endgame, so I can't tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, um, my favorite scene would be in Endgame and I can't tell you. So there was a lot of fun like that. And the biggest spoiler he would reveal of Endgame was, do you remember? It's going to make a lot of money. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's got to be careful with all those uh, Disney snipers around. I think I might have saw a red dot occasionally. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, you know what? On behalf of Do You Nerd and the people of Branson and the surrounding area, thank you so much, Mr. Gunn, for coming to, yes, thank you uh, so to coming to Branson Con and entertaining us and just being so personable and, you know, such a great guest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was great to, to be able to meet you and get an autograph and a picture with you. And thank you for that little sound bite, even though uh, he, I think he was kind of wondering, why are they asking me, do I nerd? Oh, but he sold it, though. He was a good actor. <laughs> well, nerdlings, of course, we would love for you to leave a like on the video if you happen to like it, and some comments down below if you were at Branson Con, if you've ever got to meet Sean Gunn yourself before, or anybody else. We'd love to hear that, and uh, maybe what you think of his collection. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell for those new videos coming out. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for those closer upper pictures, what we're doing out and about in the real world, and to know if a video is dropped on YouTube, because sometimes YouTube is mean and they don't tell you. And don't forget, over on TeePublic, we've got some merch for you, so head on over there and get some, ner some merch. And if we like it, we nerd it. Figure butts looking at me. <coughs> Leg, Lego figure butts. Uh, we wanted to share with you guys the panel starring Sean Gunn. I don't know. I kind of hoping you'd have something else to I say. <coughs> <laughs> Alright, start over. Like, yeah. Yep. And what else are you gonna say, Tom? Because it kind of sounded like you wanted to say something. What's up, President Tom? What's going on? Oh, 